Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 51 in the book of Revelation. Today, we're going to hear about two groups of people, and I'm so glad that you've joined me today. I don't take it for granted. Uh, I don't take your presence here, and I don't take the position of your soul, your consideration, what you're doing here. I don't take that for, for, for granted. So today, we're going to hear about two groups of people. One is a, is a group of per, uh, people that refuse God and insist upon worshiping the beast and are marked by the beast, who is the dragon, who is Satan. And then we're going to hear about this other group, those who endure and whose deeds of this life are commended in the next life. So let's first talk about the rebels. This is from <clears throat> Revelation chapter 14. I'm going to start in verse 9. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur, fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, these worshipers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. All right, so this group of people is marked by the beast, and they are getting, let me just say it again, they're drinking the wine of God's wrath poured full strength into the cup of his anger. Man, that sounds bad. And it results in torment with fire and sulfur which equals brimstone. So it's the old word. It means burning stone. It's it's an element uh, on the periodic table that's been known since 2000 BC, and it's used, you know, in matches, right? Sulfur mat matches and has a stink to it. So that not only does the beast have a bad end, but worshipers of the beast have a bad end. The smoke of their torment, of those who worship the beast, uh, and God's not capricious here because these are devoted, committed rebels who have re been given repeated chances to repent. And so they have a bad end. And the, just the teaching point is obviously don't be one of those people. All right, let's turn our attention to those who finish well, to those who fight all the way to the end. And some people die well in the Lord. And not only do they do that, but they're recognized for it. They're remembered for it. And in a sense, we are called to that for those of us that are still living. So listen for the admiration in this piece of scripture for those who finish well. And listen for the acclaim that is given believers who endure in acclaiming his name until their last heartbeat. And then listen for the accomplishments of the earthly life. So stuff that's done here that follows these people into the next life. That's the part that blew my mind today. The last line of what I'm going to get to here. Verse 12, here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the, death, uh, are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, capital S, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Their deeds follow them. So believers, you mean to tell me that what I do here today on this earth will follow me into the eternity of tomorrows. So, of course, he wants us to be faithful in relationship with him and enjoy his closeness and his conviction and treasuring the contact. That's all the rainbows part. But then he says that, that they have, on this slide, have been working to the point of fatigue and toiling until weariness. They call, he calls it labors. And the Christian life should be you know, difficult and involve some inconvenience. So the access uh, to the Lord, are we planning to go all the way to death and do the beautiful? That is to die in the Lord. That's what's being commanded here. Being found faithful in the end. So faith follows you into the next world. And what you, what you should... Um, also following us into the next world is our labors. Our labors follow us into the into the next world. 
So I agree that we're saved by faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone, and revealed by scripture alone, and for his glory alone, but demonstrated, this is the sixth sola, as, which is demonstrated by labor and work and stuff that makes you tired. So if you follow the breadcrumbs of, of a person's behavior, they should lead you to a person's foundation, the foundation of their soul. So Christian is as Christian does. And Christian belief is the only real important thing. And Christian belief is demonstrated by action. So Christian action is described here in this passage as labor. That is work that makes you tired. Christian faith has practical hands and feet of effort and kindness and patience and love. Now, here's the, the, the thing that rocked my world today, is the breadcrumbs of behavior are eternal. Our actions follow us into heaven. That's what the passage says. Our deeds follow us into heaven. So if you knew today that your deeds, that let's say stuff you do this morning or whatever, until noon today or whatever, will last forever and mark you and speak about you and describe you to the Lord himself and the Spirit uh, for this hour today, for that hour, and then it, it says forever, for all eternity. So if you knew today that your deeds would last forever, what would you want them to say? So what, and then practically, what will you do today that you wish to be heard on that day? So we are, all of us, leaving a trail of breadcrumbs of our behavior. And the question is, where do those breadcrumbs lead? lead? So the, the assurance today is that I'm seen. That's, you know, kind of a good thing. And if you're in the good group and it's a bad thing, if you're in the bad group. And my deeds are known now. They're seen now. And I am known by my deeds now, at least partially. But my deeds will follow me. My deeds will follow me into eternity. So how does that inform my behavior? So the charge today is to, uh, from, from Revelation here, is to endure, keep going. Let your behavior be as one who is blessed and let our actions inform our deeds because our deeds will follow us. Write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Thanks for listening.